everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be looking at everything I've ever completed 2019 part four. Um, there may be one more part because I have got loads of, I've got quite a few other books still left in my bookshelf and I have done quite a few pictures in the, the last um, books that are left there. So I think it would be better to maybe do five parts because also it means I have to take them off the shelf and as I said can't currently pause the video and stitch it together so I think I'm just going to do the ones I pulled off for part four and then I will do a part five wrapping it up um, and I've also just remembered as well because I've got some pdfs ones that are downstairs that I also need to bring up and show you so I'll include those in with the um, last part so we are going to look at my Fabiana Atanasio um, pictures that I have done um, unfortunately, although I have quite a few of her books, I haven't done very many in her book. So this is Snow White by Fabiana Atanasio. Um, there's, her books are a little bit harder to come by these days because, um, they're just not printing them anymore. So there's still some Snow White, I think around a couple of her other ones. And then if not, you have to just get the like Italian editions. So there tends to be a lot more of the Italian edition books around. So um, apologies if you can't get hold of any of these and you wanted to. So I have done this one in Snow White. Um, this was the first one I did. I got this book for Christmas, I think in 2017. So um, I've unfortunately done two pictures, as I said, in this one. So this one, which is of the castle, um, I used acrylic paint, a bit of Posca pen for the snow here. I have got a bit of Winker Stella on the snow. Um, so I'm going to gel pen, I used her Prismacolor pencils but I also used the Black Widow pencils for the trees and the tops of the castle there. And then the other one I have done in this one is this one of Snow White and she has the ribbon um, on her corset which has caused her to, you know, kind of stop breathing until the dwarves come and remove it. I know it's not in the Disney version of the film, but it's in like different book versions, which I have read as a child. So I use gouache primarily for this one. There's a little bit of metallic paint, um, watercolour paint here, a little bit of gel pen, and then metallic uh, acrylic paint or pearlescent acrylic paint. And I really like how this one came out and it was quite fun to do. And I decided to do her dress just like different colours. So she probably will have different, her dress will look different probably in all the pictures that I do. It won't always be the same colours because I will just do what I feel like doing and I just fancy doing a blue and purple one for that one. Um, so the next one I have got is Hansel and Gretel. Um, again, I've only done two in this one. The first one I've done, and this is the Italian version because I couldn't get the English version because it sold out, um, again, it's by Fabiana Atanasio. So I have done this one, just this little like page here. I use Posca pen for the background. There's plenty of stickles on there, which, you know, you can see. Um, and I've used, I think, Prismacolor pencils for this one. I may have used some other pencils as well, but I can't remember. And then the only other one I've done is this one of Gretel, which used acrylic paint, watercolor paint, um, I think I used Luminance pencils and Prismacolor pencils for this one. Um, so, yes. And there's some stickles on there as well. I decided to change her outfit and make it green. <laughs> Again, it might be that in this book they will have different coloured outfits because I can't, I'm not necessarily one for doing consistent stuff. Next, I have Cinderella. I think I've done three in this one. I think three, it could be two, but I'm just guessing I've done three. So this was a colour along with KP and Sammy. This is the first picture I ever did. So I've used Prismacolor pencil, no, not Prismacolor, sorry, I've used Polychromos pencils. Um, maybe a few Prismas here and there, but mostly Polychromos. And yes, that's it. I was thinking that if I use ink tents, but I haven't used ink tents. Um, so that is what I used for that one, and that was quite fun to do. And then I have done... Yep, I'm thinking I have only done one more in this one. I have done this double page, page spread of The Prince and Cinderella. I have used um, Fine Tech Metallic Paint 
to do the frame. This didn't take me too long to do because obviously I decided to use the um, metallic paint to do the frame, which you know didn't take forever. And then because they're not like their their pictures, their portraits don't take up like an awful lot of space in of the page. I only had them to do, and it take long. I, it was hard trying to figure out what colours I wanted to do the prince's outfit though. So um, I like I do like how it came out. Again, he might I might change the colours. I really like how I did the leather of the gloves though. That is what I like the most. So I used Prismacolor pencils for that. And um, Cinderella has to have a stickled up shoe because, you know, they would be sparkly <laughs> and glittery. So um, I've done that. I realised I should probably have put a bit of dirt on her skin to make her look dirty because I've got it on her rags. I just didn't do it on her skin. But oh well. So that's all I have done in that book. Um, so yes, again, I hope to come back. Oh, I just it's, it's just so hard we have so many books I want to colour them all all the time and going through flipping through these for you I'm like oh I so want to do a picture in this one and then in this one and then you know I just can't if I had eight arms you know I could do it um so this is Be Beauty and the Beast or La Bella F um e La Bestia which is the Italian title because this is the Italian version because again could not get the English version because it sold out but I don't mind, so I have done this one, which is a buddy colour with KP. We, um, I think she chose this, pic this picture to do. So we have um, Belle reading in a field. So I tried, this was before I learnt the technique that I did from cutting the Livia. Um, this is basically me trying to do grass with watercolour paint. Um, it did take quite a bit of time. I mean, I think it's not too bad. I just think it's very dark green but I think the strokes here so they're they're really straight on this bit then I went a bit more freer with it and it looks better and then I've added in some white gel pen to add a few like you know leafy well flowery things um I think I used gouache for the background and then I've used an acrylic paint to kind of make the clouds this is ink tense I think here um and then I've used Koh-i-Noor pencils for her dress I've used Prismacolor for her skin and her hair, and then I've used Ink Tense, I think, for the tree? Or is it not Ink Tense? I feel like it was Ink Tense, but it looks like pencil to me. Sorry, I'm gonna have to... Uh, I think it is, I think it, mm, I feel like it's like maybe a base of Ink Tense, and then I've gone over the top of pencil. It looks like it's a base of something, like watercolor or something like that. I'm not sure, because it looks like there's pencil over the top, but I don't think the whole thing is pencil, so. Um, or maybe I based it with the super tip. I may have based it with the super tip. Um, so she has got a some gel pen on her and some, you know, just some gold paint, metallic paint there. And I've also put silver gel pen on um, over the black lines that were on her sleeves. So I thought that would be kind of cool to make it like it's got like a silver pattern instead of, um, and I've done it here as well, instead of it being white. So that was quite cool to do. Um, do, do, do. This is the first picture I did in this one, and um, I've also gone for the traditional yellow dress that Belle wears in the Disney movies. Um, I used, I think, I either used my luminance pencils or I used my Prismacolor pencils for this. And I've got, I think it's pastel in the background. And what I have done is I got a stencil and I drew round it because I found I can't, I have to draw around the stencils to get it to work. Um, and I've just gone over with some gold fine tech paint to make this kind of wallpaper background, which I really liked that I did. I thought that was quite cool. And there's some stickles on her dress and the white gel pen on her dress because I thought that would look quite cool. And then another picture, which was also a butter colour with KP, was this one. And I used gouache and pencil, um, prism colour pencil, I think, for this one. Um, and I really like how that came out, and I think that looks really nice. And again, yellow dress. I've only got a little bit of stickles just on her dress. There. I didn't want to quite. Do, I didn't want to do what I did for the other one. Plus, I was worried that actually putting stickles over. I find if you put stickles on watercolour paint and gouache paint, it will bleed through because. Um, it's obviously water based and the stickles themselves are wet so that they kind of will bleed through so I wouldn't put stickles over the top of watercolour unless it's like a single sided book. 
Um, so yeah, that is that one. I enjoy doing that one. So yeah, I've done three in this one, which is strange because I wouldn't have thought that I would have ended up doing three in that book, but I think because me and Katie wanted to do some buddy colours, that was the book we ended up doing it in. So that is why, <laughs> why I have got so many done in that one. So next I've got Wizard of Oz, and unfortunately I've only done, I think, two in this one. So I have done this page, which is a bit like what I did in Hansel and Gretel. So I've done it emerald colours. I would... I think her hair I would do, you know, not like that <laughs> now. Um, I don't know why I even did it like that, because I don't think I did my hair in that sort of way back when I did this anyway. But it's got acrylic background, it's got stickles all over it, because, you yeah, know, it just would, wouldn't it? Um, and, yeah, so I think, again, now my gem skills are a bit better, I probably, again, would, the gems would look a bit better or different um, to what they are, but it's still fine, like, I still like the picture, I'm just seeing that it would look a bit different, I think, if I was to do it now, and then the other picture I did is this one, again, I used gouache to do this one, so, apart from this bit, which is a metallic, um, acrylic paint, everything else is gouache, um, and I really like how that came out, um, the yellow bricks did take an awfully long time, because I had to wait for them to dry before I could add the next layer on, but, um, yeah, so I really enjoyed doing that one, and I so need to do these just so I can put stickles all over those, but I would first of all need to do this page because otherwise it will, um, I will find it a bit tricky to colour over it. Here next I've got Alice in Wonderland, um, so I have only done two in this one as well I believe, or it could be three, but I'm pretty sure it's just two. I feel like I, I feel like part of me is done way more than that in all of them, but <laughs> obviously not. This again was a buddy colour with KP. We really liked the Fabiana book, so quite a few pictures I've done as a buddy colour with her actually. Um, so this is the King and Queen of Hearts. This was the first picture I did in this book. I used Prismacolor. I think I also used some Luminous pencils, and then I've got pastel for the background and a bit of gel pen. Um, yep, yeah, I think that crown is gel pen. I don't think I used acrylic pink. This is probably before I had the. Um, sorry, the Fine Tech watercolour paint, and then I have done this one, which, <laughs> guess what, I've done it with gouache, apart from the background, which I think I may have used watercolour pencils for, so the background doesn't look amazing, but it's fine, because the main, main focal point is her and the mushrooms, so I don't mind that the background's a bit meh, because it's, it's it wasn't supposed to be anything special anyway, so yeah, I've used gouache for um, her, and yeah, I think apart from her skin, her skin is pencil. Um, and then the mushrooms as well is gouache, and I quite like how the mushrooms came out. Um, yeah, so I think it looks it's all right. Like it, I don't think it's amazing. I did use a bit of pencil on the top of some of these mushrooms just to add, because I don't think I had a darker brown at the time. This is before I had those Arteza ones and some of the other ones that I have from Mims and Newton, so I didn't have as many colors. And then there's a bit of gel pen. So yeah, this, this one's all right. And that's what I've done in there so far. Next, this is the last Fabiana Atanasio book I've got. And this is the first one I ever got, Peter Pan. I do love how I just stumbled across her on Amazon. This, And I saw she had a couple of these books. But at the time, I thought I would just get this one because um, I just did, couldn't justify spending loads and loads of money on books. So even though these weren't very expensive, I just thought, because I'm still living at home, my parents sometimes judge me when I buy things, because they're like, oh, you shouldn't be spending your money on this, and I'm like, I have the money I can. So anywho, it's fine, because I have, I have them now, so it's not a problem, but <laughs> I have this one, and this one I have done quite a few pictures in, because it was the first one I had, and I just happened to, it did take me a long time to get around to doing pictures in this book, actually, so, um, I have done this one, again, hate the background, but I um, do like how Tinkerbell came out. Again, I probably, and like, I do like how I've done her wings, but I just think I would maybe colour them in a bit differently with the yellow. But I do like the gold, so that I probably would have kept, but I think I would have just done them slightly differently. But aside from that, I do like how I've done her dress and her hair, so I don't think I would do that anything different. And her skin probably would just look a bit better now if I was to do it now, but... um. Other than that, like, you know, I was still pretty pleased with how this one came out, because obviously, you know, as I say, my colouring is, was different from so many years ago as it is today, so it will change. I've just done a little bit there 
of uh, using some super tip and then going over the top with pencil, just testing that out and then I realised I left his foot out. <laughs> So that's fine, I'm sure I can sort it out. Um, I have done this mermaid one, this was a buddy colour with KP, ages ago. So I think I used her technique of basing water, watering down um, super tips and then going to the top of the pencil and I think, I feel like that's a Neo Colour 2 background but it might not be. Not really sure but I used Prismacolor pencils. I tried to make her hair dip dyed or I think I tried to do it with all of them actually. So yeah, it's like kind of a lighter pink to a darker pink, a lighter purple to a darker purple, lighter blue to a darker uh, turquoisey colour. Um, so I do did want to and still do want to put stickles on their tails, but I haven't because I really would want to colour this picture and I just think I knew that the stickles would be a problem. So that's why there's no stickles on this because I would gladly put stickles on and that, that will probably be the same for quite a few of my Fabiana books that I will want to put stickles on them, but either I'll put them on if the if it's a wallpaper page on the other side I'm not really fussed about coloring that in so that's fine but if it's like one I know I want to color in then I feel like oh I should probably wait to put stickles on them so one day these will have stickles um just not today this is another one I did and I used creative super tips to base the um totem poles I went over the top with um pencil use pastel for background um, so yes, I quite liked how Tiger Lily came out, um, I really liked this one, I looked at pictures of totem poles so I could, you know, try to match the colours to kind of what they were. I have seen real totem poles in Canada before, so, um, some of them don't, some of them are painted, some of them are not painted, but the ones I looked at mine were, and this was a buddy colour with Sammy and KP, and I realised you just can't see the whole thing, so now you can, um, so I used pastels for the background I think I may have based a few things with some creative super tips not much though by the looks of it and I really do like how I had done her dress I think her dress um, looks really nice it, so this is how I think I would prefer her wings to have looked in the other picture that I did so I do love the fact that she's gone from gold wings to kind of silvery wings but I do like how they are in this one I think they look much better I would have loved to put Wink Stella all over it but I just knew that it would I would have wasted the entirety of the whole bottle because her wings are massive. So um, yeah, I just got a bit of glitter gel pen um, here and there in it, slash metallic gel pen. Um, and there should be one more picture, which was another buddy colour that me and KP did. And this is one that we did this year, actually. So I hadn't done anything in this book for a long time. So it was nice to come back to it. And it's the Darling Family Portrait. So I've got acrylic paint for this background bit here, this background, background, that background here. I used gel pen actually to do the frame. Um, I've used a little bit of Paul Rubens metallic paint for this bit, and I've used Prismacolor pencils. Um, and yeah, that is basically everything I've done in Fabiana Atanasio. So next we have got Gnomes in the Neighbourhood by Denise Collette. Um, I have only done two in this one. So I've, this was the more recent one I did. I used Ink Tense, Prismacolor, Watercolor Pencil, oh, sorry, Watercolor Paint, and then Stickles. So I quite like the colour palette I chose of sort of pinks and oranges just because I don't always use those colours together. Um, I was trying to make these kind of with the watercolour kind of make it look like there's loads of them. It didn't really turn out how I wanted it to, so, but you know, it's fine. And I used ink tents for the tree trunk just because I thought I was not going to colour that all with pencil. So yeah, this one's okay. Not like amazing, but I didn't hate it. And then I've done this winter picture because I think I got this last winter. So um, yeah, I've done this wintry one and I used the Paul Rubens paint or it could be the Gansai Tambi silver one for the snow. Um, like I did in the other picture in Romantic Country and I used Prismacolor pencils and I think Black Widows for these trees here and so yeah that one's a nice one that came out and I liked the colours that I chose again sort of colours I wouldn't normally choose but I like how that one came out so next I have Pop Manga Mermaids and Other Sea Creatures by Camilla Derrico um, I have done two pictures in this one one was recent one was from when I got it so there's this one which has watercolour paint um, in the background I did use like a um, then went over with a shimmery sort of watercolour paint to add like a bit of shimmer in it um, I have got 
fine tech, like I think a unicorn in Fiji or unicorn and mermaid. Can't remember which one it was, but I used that and then went over with a bit of pencil. She has stickles on her hair. He's got stickled um, horns and a bit of gel pen for that one. And then this is the more recent one I did, which was the sea monkeys because I wanted to do a picture in this one anyway, but then KP started doing this one and I was like, I really want to do the sea monkeys too. And obviously it didn't take too long to do to colour them in. And I used the um, Arteza uh, pencils for this for the monkeys and the octopus and then I just used the Arteza acrylic paint to do a metallic acrylic paint to do the background um, for this one so that was quite fun so yeah unfortunately the paint doesn't come out like super smooth so it is a little bit you know blotchy here and there but like I, I didn't mind it's still kind of cool so there's that one next I have got Throne of Glass um, by uh, I don't know there's different artists but the book is by Sarah J Mass um, I actually started reading the book series, really enjoyed it. I've read three of the books so far. haven't read the fourth one because I didn't have it in the library because I've been being good and getting them from the library rather than buying them. So there's different artists. So I think it says, just so you know who the artists are, I will read out. So we've got Von Gilbert, John Howe and Craig Phillips. They are the artists in this one. Um, I have a feeling this one's by Von Gilbert though. And this is the only one I've done. And this is the first picture from the book Throne of Glass. And I thought I would just do, for the time being, any pictures in this book from the books I've read. Because otherwise I may spoil what happens. I kind of did by accident because I was flicking through it. And one of them told you a character died and I didn't know. And so I already knew that they had <laughs> died in the book before I read it. But it was okay. It wasn't like I was super annoyed about it. So I used watercolour paints for this one. The Arteza ones. Um, Cotman ones, Fine Tech ones, Jane Davenport ones. Um, so yes, I had quite a lot of fun doing that. I tried to make her look. A, it was a shame. She looked really nice, and then obviously she still looks nice anyway. But she was nice and clean, and then I had to make her dirty because she's been in a working in a mine for a, a year. So she's meant to be really dirty and ragged. So I kind of had to make her a bit dirty. But I had quite a lot of fun trying to dirty her up. Um, but was a bit worried I might ruin it if I <laughs> when I did that, but luckily it still came out good. So um, that is that one. Um, and as, as I said, there's a bit of gold paint, but yeah, I really liked doing that. That was quite fun. Um, next I have the official Game of Thrones colouring book, which has similar artists to that one because they're by the same company. So the artists in this one are uh, not there. I feel like they're written at the front, but maybe they are written in the back in this one as well. Um, so, John Howe, Levi Pinfold, Adam Stower, Yvonne Gilbert, and Tomislav Tomek, which is, this one is by Tomislav Tomek. He, I think, does has done all the shield ones. So this is Winter is Coming. Um, I will probably go and do all of these shield things at some point. And again, I'm using watercolour paint, so I used just, um, I think I used some fine tech, and I used... I can't remember what other watercolour paint, maybe probably the Jane Tavenport one, and I can't remember what other one I used for other bits, but there's that one. And then the only other one I've done in here is this one of Dario Naharis, and I used various different watercolour paints for this one. And I really like how this one came out, and I had a lot of fun doing this one. So that is that. Next I have, and I think that's an Yvonne Gilbert one as well. Um, Next I have Thomas Tomek's actual books. So I've got Zendler Snova. So I'm trying to do this picture in order. I haven't done like the title page yet. I've just done bits of it. Ooh. Oh, the glue's like um, sticking though, I think. So this is the first picture I have done. I used Prismacolor pencils. No, I didn't. I used some Polychromos pencils and I used uh, Luminance pencils with some Fine Tech paint and I think there's a little bit of Winkostello on the fairy, not that you can really see. Um, and I based some of it watercolour and then went over the top pencil. And that is what I did for this one. So all the stonework is based in watercolour paint and then I have gone over the top with pencil. And then the cloud and the back and the sky is all done with Neocolour 2 and I have gone over the top with pencil a little bit here and there to smooth it out just a little bit. And then there's a little bit of fine tech paint just to um, make it a little bit 
this. And I decided to go for this sort of colour because I thought it's meant to be a magical book. So I thought I'd rather, you know, I wanted to do it slightly different to just doing it blue and white. So slightly different colour sky. And that's all I've done in that book. Next I have Sprock Your Spook. Sprock Your Boss. Oh, I cannot speak Dutch. So apologies Dutch speakers for butchering your language. <laughs> um... This is Vin San. See, I find even though I do not speak Croatian, the Croatian is easier to pronounce for some reason. And that's just the titles. I could not pronounce any other sort of Croatian, by the way, because it is a difficult language to pronounce. But the titles in Croatian are a lot easier to pronounce than the Dutch ones. <laughs> so, um, yes, this would be Vin San in the Croatian language. Um, and I have only done one in this one. And this one I'm not necessarily fussed at doing in order. And I have done this one, which I think, again, I used Pablo's and Luminance pencils, combination of both, and then some Fine Tech paint for that. And a bit of, I think I'll use watercolour for the background, just to do a blue. And yeah, I really like that. And I liked the fact that I decided to do the trees a different colour, because again, this is a magical book. The trees do not need to be green. I mean, in any book, they don't have to be green, but I just thought, you know. Right, um, we've got two more authors to go through, and then I will stop it for this part. So this is my Lizzie Mary Cullen books. Um, this is Tally Ho by Lizzie Mary Cullen. I've done one picture in this one. And it's also Henge because, oh, I didn't finish. For some reason, I haven't finished those bits there. That's weird. Either that or the colours just kind of, oh no, no I know. It's because that's supposed to be the moon shining on that big thing. It doesn't look very good though. <laughs> I don't think I've got moon glow at all on that. I was just thinking, why is that not done? That makes sense because look, I've got the sun on that side. The sun looks better. And this is Stonehenge because Stonehenge is um, quite close to where I live. Um, and there's different parts of the UK in here. And I thought, oh yeah, I'd love to like, you know, do somewhere I live. I think, the, I think there is... No, there was a place that looked like Glastonbury Abbey, but it's a different one. So this is the only bit of Britain that I could do that was close to where I lived so which is Stonehenge so I did this one with ink tints paint and some pearlescent fine tech as well so yeah nothing ama amazing in that one but it was still a fun quick one to do next I have Magical City which was my first book of hers so I tend to have just done ink tents um, in her books or use watercolour pencil so this was the first one I ever did so it doesn't look amazing because I didn't really know how to use ink tents pencils at the time so that's Sherlock Holmes um, and then I have done this one following the Peter Hewitt tutorial which I think a lot of people have done this one by Peter here but no, it's just purely because it really helped me learn how to do how to use the ink tense pencils so um and I feel that's probably why a lot of other people have also followed the tutorial just because it really helps you know and understand like how to you know colour it so um Peter Hewitt hasn't done any new ones however a uh, colouring with Elena that's A-L-E-N-A -E she does a lot of pictures using ink tents in Lizzie Mary Cullen book so I recommend her to watch to help you if you are stuck on how to use them because she does quite a good job showing you how to use them and I've learned a bit from her as well haven't followed any for tutorials though but I've just learned um, from her some things and this is my really garish San Francisco picture that I'm really sad about but I think there's another one in her other book so I can make it better so this may be a book that it's a shame because I haven't heard a lot in here but I kind of feel like I want to buy it again just so I can redo this picture and the Sherlock Holmes one. <laughs> so I might do one day. Um, but obviously the other pictures I haven't coloured in so they would they would be fine. Um, so yes, there are some stickles in this one. I did use some ear colour too and I think I also used maybe some Albert Dura as well. Possibly for that one. And this one is the space station the international space station because i love space it's like one of my favorite things so i i love like you know following what nasa and international space station and esther are doing so there are some stickles on it because that's the thing i can add stickles to this because i'm going to use ink tents so it doesn't matter um so yeah there's that i try to get it so that the sun is shining on the panels there 
so you kind of got like the sun shining a little bit on it it was a little bit hard to do and that's kind of like meant to be a glow of the sun shining on it um I should have one more picture in here I should have one more picture in here because I believe I've done four and I've only shown you three so bear with me whilst I find it because it is somewhere in here oh no I have shown you four I've shown you four don't worry that's just me being like not able to count <laughs> right next one to the magical journey I have also done four in this one as well so um, I think I prefer this book out of the two um, just because it's got a few more places so this was the one that I did more recently and I decided to go a little bit out of my comfort zone and just sort of choose a place and choose one that was a bit more busier because there's a lot of busy ones and it's a bit hard to distinguish what's what in this book sometimes hence why there's just random light blue and pink because I was like what the hell is that supposed to be no idea because there's a bit of the sky going into it just sort of made my own thing um, so I this is a festival I think in it says La, La Pez Bolivia. So I looked up this festival so I could look up get the colours for these cow creatures. So I've kind of followed the colour schemes of what they had um, for the ones they had. I tried to kind of, do, it was not very bright looking, but I was trying to do like um, their really nice knitted wear that they do with the bright patterns, but I wasn't very good at getting it very bright. But um, yeah, I still like how this came out. There's a little bit of glitter gel pen here and there. No stickers on this one. Um, but yeah, I, enjoy, I did enjoy doing this one. I think I used, because I don't have a light blue and pink, I used the um, super colour blue, really light blue and really light pink for that bit there. So there's that one. Um, I have done this one of uh, Lizzie on a unicorn travelling to Japan. Um, there are some stickers on this one. And yeah, I really like how this one came out and that was a lot of fun to do. And then I have got this one, which I did because I have been to Sydney and I have climbed the Harbour Bridge. I love what um, Peter Hewitt did in her. She drew people at the top and I would have loved to have done that, but I just decided not to, not to copy her, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but I have climbed this bridge and it was really fun. So if you ever go to Sydney, I recommend climbing the bridge. It was like a hundred or something dollars, like Australian dollars, which is I think about 50 something pounds, um, 50 or 60 pounds at the time of when I went. So the exchange rate may be different now, but I think it was about one pound was two dollars back when I'm, I went. Um, so yeah, I used the ink tents obviously for that. Um, I am glad I went a bit lighter with it so that it's not so bright. I mean, it's bright here, but it's like not too bright if you get me. And I did the same because I think that's the problem with the San Francisco one. I think... I used them to like too dark and they came out really dark and garish whereas actually if you have a bit of a lighter hand it's not so bad so I've got a bit of sunlight coming on the um, opera house there I like how the sun looks um, and the bridge I did use some Dermot Graffitin I think to help me with the bridge because there's not many greys in the um, Dermot ink tents so yeah I really like how that one came out I think that and that was it wasn't too difficult it did take me a while to do because I was getting distracted when I was coloring it but really it shouldn't have taken me long to do so um there's that one and then the last one I have is a root 66 one which I would love to give a black background but uh, maybe I'll do like a dark gray background for actually it's only because I had the music notes and I wanted them to be black and I thought oh I can't do black <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, I do think it would look better and it would stand out more if I did a background so I'm thinking now actually a dark grey or a blue grey would look quite nice so you may see this in the future with a background done because <laughs> I think it would look better and then of course I've got stickles on the McDee's and the, the music notes and the Route 66 so I did use um, some poly... Albert Durer's, sorry, Albert Durer pencils as well because I've got lighter pinks and blues and I did use the uh, polychromos for the chips and the and then the Burgoyne's watercolour. The chips are done in pencil though, they're not actually done in um, watercolour paint. Um, so there is that one. And then the last of the Lizzie Murray Cannon books is The Magical Christmas, which sadly I've only done one picture from. And this is a book that I will 
not just do for Christmas. I just haven't got around to doing it. And the only one I have done is this one, the Shakespeare Christmas one, which I did as a buddy colour with, you guessed it, KP. Um, <laughs> as I said, we love doing our buddy colours together. So, um, yeah, we did we did this one with Sherlock Holmes, which was really cool. So I use, obviously, ink heads. I have got some fine tech paint in it. And then there's some stickles on the star, because what would a Christmas tree be without a sparkly star? So it was quite fun. It was quite difficult trying to think of colours for the rugs. I was racking my brains for ages thinking, well, how am I going to do the rugs? Um, but I finally did these ones because I was trying to think of colours to go with the colour scheme. Like I didn't want to do them like a whole different colour um, or, you know, all green because I felt there was a lot of green already. <laughs> But um, yeah, I was, I've used sort of like dark Victorian type colours because, you know, back in the day, that was the kind of colour scheme that a lot of people had. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. I really enjoyed doing that one with her. Um, yeah, sadly, that is the only one I have done. I did actually at the time want to do the the one with the World First World War footballs, um, but I haven't done that one. So this is Magimorphia by Kirby Rosanna's. I know some people say Rosannes, but I like to say Rosannes. That's how I imagine his name is said. It may not be, um, but he has not told me otherwise, so therefore I'm going to say Rosannes. Um, so I have done three pictures in this one, and one was recently finished whip. So I have these two pictures, so... Ooh, whoops. <laughs> I just had a low battery sign. Um, thought I had it plugged in, didn't, but luckily I had it all the lead and stuff. Everything's plugged up. I just didn't actually press the, you know, flip the switch to have it on. Anywho, so um, this was the first picture I finished, which is all done in ink tents, and um, that is Elephant. So again, this was back when I didn't really quite know how to use them, but I still think I didn't do pa badly using them, and um, I do wish I had been able to blend the background a bit better, but I still like how the background looks. Like, this is the, you know, I would have wanted... The, um, and it has blended, it's just, I think there's the watermarks, that's it. You can see quite a lot of watermarks on it, but it's not like bad or anything like that. But this was just like an early one. And as you can see out there, they're just very, very dark bright, if you get me, because I've kind of added too much pigment down when I should have had a bit less. Um, and that's something that I'm learning with the ink tents not to put too, like, you know, colour too hard, because otherwise you get a very bright, dark... <laughs> Um, colour which doesn't always look great. Um, next I have this one which was my favourite picture in this entire book because I love Egypt. So it's a black acrylic background. I used my luminance pencils and some stickles and some metallic paint and pen on this one and it was really fun to do. Love how it came out. And then the last one which is a recent one that I finally finished which was a whip, a forever whip was this tiger. Now I think I started this like three years ago and finally finished it because I decided I'd go back and um, before doing this video I thought right there's some books I have not covered in forever I need to go and colour in and finish some stuff in them and this was one of them. So I finally finished the tiger and it didn't take me long to do. So I used Prismacolor pencils for the tiger and then acrylic um, paint for the background and then the last book I have which is the last bit for this part is Mythomorphia but also by Kirby Rosannes this is the French edition because the English one was going to take too long to come out so I got the French one so I have done this opening page which I used ink tents I think a little bit a little bit of ink tents maybe but mostly watercolour paint um, this is my first time kind of using watercolour so it looks okay not amazing though so I would probably do that again but at least I'm glad it's just the opening page and not like the actual proper parts of the book so I've done this dragon the Chinese dragon I looked up pictures of Chinese dragons chose this color combo because I thought that would look cool plus it was different to what other people have done this is using polychromos prismacolor possibly luminance as well but I think it's pretty much prismacolor and and uh, polychromos with a little bit of gel pen here and there in it so that was fun, I like that one. Next I have this, which I have done entirely with Neocolor 2, apart from the Yeti here, or sorry, Bigfoot Yeti, or it could be both actually. I could have made him look like the Yeti, but he's not, he's Bigfoot. 
combine the two together, <laughs> even though they wouldn't really live. Well, they could, well, I don't know. Uh, Canada gets quite cold. It could be a Yeti in the Yukon, maybe. The world is Bigfoot, who knows? And then there are some stickles on the snow, and there is Winkostella as well, but unfortunately I don't think you can really make the Winkostella out. Um, this first half, the mountains and the sky, was a tutorial that I followed by Dee Dee and everything else I did myself. So there's that one. I've done quite a few double page spreads in this book. So next I have my dragons. I had to them not as a double page spread, but they can kind of go together. So this was a sea dragon that I turned into an ice dragon after watching Game of Thrones and when the dragons became an ice dragon. So I thought, yes. And I have put stickles in there. There's acrylic paint, um, Prismacolor pencils as well. This is kind of the same sort of thing. Um, kind of like meant to be Drogon from Game of Thrones. So I've put stickles on it. There's acrylic paint as well and Prismacolor. Um, I wish I did know how to colour fire a bit better because fire would look better if, you know, it was whatever. Um, then this was a double page spread from ages ago which I finally also finished this year. Where, and there's videos of how I did the whole thing that you can watch. So we used Neo Colour 2, we used a little bit of Prismacolour, fine tip paint and the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils for this one. And uh, there's no stickles on this one though, um, but there's that one which took like forever. And there's this one that I did for Halloween a good few years ago. So I tried to use like um, an acrylic paint but it didn't turn out well. So I have used colour pencil over the top of it. So basically this was what the acrylic paint was coming out like and I thought that doesn't look great. But actually I like what I did over the top by using um, the pencils over the top of it because I think that the sky looks better. Now my ghoul is very bright green I still like how he came out, but he is very bright green. <laughs> um, he has got, he is covered in stickles though, and so are the birds, and the tree is meant to have like, there's like blood seeping out of the tree. And I'm not really one for spooky pictures either. I don't really do spooky or creepy creatures, plus I probably would never have chosen to do, done this picture in a million years, but it was like a colour, a long you could do on a, um, someone's Instagram, and it was this picture or one other one, and I thought, you know what, this is a picture I don't think I'd ever really colour. I actually am going to do this. And then I had came up with the idea of doing the tree with the blood seeping out. So then I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to do this one. But yeah, it's quite funny. There were a lot more pictures I would choose over this to do in the book. But um, I still don't mind that I did it. And I think that might be everything I've done in this book. I don't think I've done any other ones. Nope, I think that's everything. So, um... Yeah, that bit, that is it for part four. Sorry, that's more in, in the frame. This is it for part four of everything I've ever coloured. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if they, if you've got any questions about any of the books, feel free to ask. Um, apologies if I can't remember what, exactly what pencils or exactly what watercolour paints and stuff I used in each picture because you know a lot of these I may have done a long time ago some of them I can remember some of them I can't so um I hope you enjoy this and hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you soon